The iPad does not particularly have a very good reputation when it comes to graph plotting. In this video I'm going to show you how using two simple applications, Apple's numbers and also notability, you can plot good science graphs. Numbers doesn't have a good reputation compared to a lot of its PC and Mac counterparts um, such as Excel um, and it does have lots of limitations but nevertheless when it comes to graph plotting I think that in terms of simplicity it's much more straightforward than many of the um, dedicated graph plotting apps that are out there. Now I'm going to start by just pasting in some data that I collected earlier into the app. Now you will notice that when you open up um, numbers, you're presented with this kind of table, which is a bit large for what we want to use. Now at the top right of it, there's a little circular button. If I press the circular button and hold it, I can collapse those rows on the right-hand side. And likewise, below, there's another circle button. And if I drag that upwards, I can get rid of the rows that are below. Finally, clicking at the top of the left-hand column allows me to delete it, which leaves me with the table like so. Now, this data is for a falling papers cones experiment. If you've seen some of my earlier Excel tutorials, you, you probably recognise this data, which I've used many times before. What I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to start by calculating the average um, of the readings that I've got in the columns just to the three, three columns to the left of that. I'm going to enter a formula, so I need to click on the equal sign and then functions, average, and then I'm going to use my finger to highlight those three columns and then finally on the right hand side there's a tick button which I'm going to press like so in order to enter the formula. That's my first formula entered. Now if I click on that cell again it will bring up a menu and on the right hand side there's something called fill. Now fill is the equivalent of the drag down function that you've got in Excel. So if you select fill and then hold the bottom of the yellow box that appears and drag that downwards it will copy that formula into the rest of your table. So now I've calculated my averages. Now, graph plotting is not all that straightforward with numbers, and it's fairly easy to make mistakes. To add a graph, you need to click on the plus that is on the top right. And you've got a selection here of many different styles. The styles just vary in colour, but the type of graph that I want to add is the one on the bottom left, which is a scatter graph. Now that that's appeared, you'll notice that it says tap to add data to this chart. I'm going to tap that, and then to select the data, I hold my finger against one of the cells and then run my finger over the cells that I want to plot. Now, at the moment, I've only highlighted one cell here, and so it's plotting that cell on the y-axis against just numbers 1 to 8 on the x-axis. Now, in actual fact, I want that on, on the x-axis, the height, as you'll see in a moment. To add the second column, which is the average, I simply put my finger on the top cell and drag down in exactly the same way. And now that I've got two columns, it's sorted the data out correctly. The height is now on the x-axis, the average time is now on the y-axis, which is the way round that I want it. Now I'm going to deselect the table now, and what I want to do is do some editing to this graph. Um, the graph is selected. If I tap on it again, what I, I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to cut the graph to remove it, but then I'm going to tip on the Add tab directly above the table, and I'm going to paste it into a second sheet, which allows me to increase the size, which helps with the editing. Now, the graph is now selected. If I click on the paintbrush at the top right, it allows me to edit certain aspects of the graph. I'm going to start by going to Chart Options, and I'm going to remove the legend that appeared at the top, because that really doesn't do anything of any use. Going back, if I go onto the x-axis, I want to add major grid lines, minor grid lines, major tick marks, and also have a title that I can edit in a little while when it comes to labeling that graph. Now, if I click on Value Scale Settings, that allows me to select where my major and minor grid lines occur. Now, this is not exactly all that intuitive. I'll, I'm going to start by just increasing how many major steps I have. If I increase the number of major steps, you'll notice that the grid lines distribute themselves um, differently across the graph. And I've now got them occurring every 50, which is a lot better. When it comes to doing minor steps, the numbers that tend to work well for this are either 4 or 9, because when you've got 9, it means it's going up every 5 in this case. When you've got 4, it means they go up every 10. Now, my x-axis extends all the way to 300. But actually, although I want to keep the origin on my graph, I don't have any data above the value of 240. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set as a maximum data for my table 250 
so that now the graph just goes from 0 to 250. Now having done that, I've actually gone and um, altered the, the value scale, so I'll just alter that back a little bit just to correct that. Now I'm going to go to the y-axis and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Minor grid lines, major tick marks, title and also an axis line. If I go into the value scale for this, once again I can increase it and increase the minor steps to 4 and there we are, there's the graph looking pretty good. Now I could, just by clicking on things like the title, by tapping the title, it's quite tricky to select it. I could actually start giving the graph a name and doing the same thing with the axis. I'm not going to bother doing that for now. Instead, what I'm going to do is copy the graph because I'm going to copy it across an out of notability. One of the flaws of numbers is there's no way to add a trend line. If we go onto a note-taking app such as Notability, and Notability is one of my favourite apps, um, you can add a trend line using the functions that are built into this. Now I've created a new note, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste my graph into this new note. There you go. Now, one of the nice things about Notability is Notability gives you a wonderful way of combining text or um, handwritten notes very very easily and it would be tempting at this stage just to select the handwriting tool at the top and to draw directly over the top of the graph but actually there is a better way of doing this if I select the graph in text mode and click edit it takes me to an editing window now at the top left there is a writing icon and you'll notice that under the tools there is a straight line tool there is also a hand drawing tool for curves and that allows me to draw a straight line over the graph like that. Now it doesn't look very pretty at the moment, but if I go back and select the cursor and then touch on the line, I can now alter the line until I get what starts to look like, like a much better fit. And I can also start altering features of the line such as its colour and also the stroke width. And having done that, my graph should, if I click done, start looking very good. You can also actually copy your table over to Notability as well, but doing that is a little less straightforward because if you copy a table into Notability you just get loads of numbers. Notability doesn't recognize the table format. So the way to do that very very quickly is if you go back to numbers, select your table, take a picture by pressing the home button and the power button simultaneously, that will take a picture which is then stored as a photo and if I then go back into Notability and add a photo, my table appears like that. And if I edit it, I can simply use the Trim button to cut it down to size. And lo and behold, I have my data table as well. Absolutely wonderful and very, very easy.